All right, good morning. Welcome to the vlog. Um, so we are just getting back from Banks Lake and um, it was an amazing trip. The, the, that vlog should already be up by now, but um, it was an amazing trip. 10 days in a beach lake paradise. We stayed with some families that we really enjoy their company and um, it was just an awesome time. But uh, drove yesterday, took about a five hour trip to get home. Now we're home. And uh, like I said, we have committed to a half marathon. Running is not something that has been a strong suit of mine for a long time. I've kind of let that take the back seat and uh, focus more on building my business. But now that the business is running, it's time to start pushing my body a little bit more. So um, we're up and at it. It is 6.30 and we are heading to the track. Um, uh, we've got a nice little hour long running workout today. Uh, Megan's actually joining me. So um, we're, we're, we're in our vehicle now and we are gonna head to the track and I'll see you there. So <clears throat> just getting here to the track, and um, this is kind of the track that I've been working on recently, especially when it comes to like any sort of interval or like specific distance stuff. Um, so the workout today, uh, I've been running four times per week and just kind of mixing in, like doing intervals, doing some lactic threshold, like faster paced tempo runs and um, getting in volume of distance. But today is all about running easy. We're gonna be working inside of a, so I've been using a little bit of like zone heart rate stuff. So gonna be working in between zone two and three. So for me, that's gonna be between 130 and 150 on my heart rate. I use my Garmin here to track my heart rate. So I'm gonna be running inside of those zones for each interval and I'm going 10 sets of five minutes on, one minute off and the goal is to maintain my pace throughout each five minute interval um, i'm able to track my mile splits inside of my watch here um, but going to be maintaining my pace and then maintaining that nice easy heart rate um, what i've heard and what i've learned from listening to uh, a ton of different things about uh, you know making your endurance and aerobic capacity better is the importance of running easy the importance of not just going out and, and running max effort for every single run. So I've been really kind of honing in on that and making sure that on my easy run days, I'm staying true to that heart rate. So again, 10 sets, five minutes on, one minute off, staying in between a zone two or three heart rate. Um, this is my last run of the week. So we're looking at about an hour's worth of work here. Should be around, usually in about an hour, I get pretty close to five miles. So we'll see how I do. I'm gonna be running at about a 9.10 to 9.15 pace to keep that heart rate down. So uh, here we go, let's go do it. All right, run recap. Went about 6.2 miles. Um, was able to maintain that heart rate. I actually stayed a little bit under 140 the entire time. I actually had to keep, keep reminding myself that the uh, purpose of this run was for it to be easy, to just accumulate some miles, just because it was feeling good. It was feeling like I was ready to take off and really push it. Um, so I kept the heart rate down, ran. Last time I did this exact workout was actually the the beginning of this program and uh, still the same thing 10 sets five minutes each one minute off 
and uh, I was running about a 9.15 and 9.30 pace for each mile and today I was running 8.15 between 8.15 and 9.10 same heart rate and um, I found myself like I said wanting to push it wanting to go um, felt pretty good the only thing I kind of felt towards the end um, and that's just because like the volume of running that I've been doing is not very high up until this point was just some tightness in the hip flexors and then a little bit of I'm not gonna say pain but just discomfort in my knees um, I did get some new shoes finally just because of that I went with these um, kind of hybrid hokas um, they felt pretty good um, but I got those for the reason of just my <laughs> I'm 35 years old things hurt when you start you know doing new things I've got to really embrace enjoying those times enjoying being at the track doing the work when nobody else is around when nobody's watching when nobody cares where I'm at being here and doing the thing that's really the only way to experience a result and that could be the same thing for you know person trying to lose weight person trying to put on muscle person trying to put on you know do something cool in their life or their business is that we get so caught up with instant gratification with like being able to experience the feeling or the result without actually doing anything to earn it. And I, I can't tell you that how many times this has rang true for me in my life, um, which is against everything I preach to people about wanting to, you know, having to enjoy the process and having to earn what is yours. And I'm walking through it right now, walking through it with you guys, trying to really embrace what it feels like to do the work for a long time so that I can experience the result. Um, so, today I was working on my cadence, right? How many steps I'm taking, right? And then the length of my stride. Two little pointers. Most people end up being about 150 to 180 steps per minute while they're um, jogging if you're using good technique. Um, all the marathoners out there, if I, if I don't have the exact number, that's just what I kind of looked up. Um, so that's one thing. Um, and a good way to do that would be to simply count every other time your foot. So for me, I was counting my left foot strike. Every time my left foot would hit for 30 seconds, I would count. Um, and at one point I was hitting 40. The next point I was hitting 45. So you multiply that by two and then you multiply that by two again. And I, I was hitting between 170 and 190. So I needed to slow my foot strike down a little bit. But it was something interesting to just kind of work on as I went through that. So a little tidbit there to think about. So I'm done. I'm gonna finish this cool down walk. Got about 50 grams of carbs in here and electrolytes from just some Gatorade powder. I'm gonna finish drinking that and then I'm gonna go home and have breakfast. Observational standards, right? Like my parents, my grandparents, uh, family, people in my life, coaches, they, they introduced standards to me and it was more, it was absurd. All right, so change of plans. <clears throat> I did not realize that it was about 8 a.m. when I was finishing my workout, uh, which is super funny because I literally was looking at my watch the entire time. But um, it, it's Saturday today, which means no gi jiu-jitsu, and I'm gonna go ahead in. Um, recently, I just put uh, my man Jack in charge of the no gi program, so I'm gonna go take his class. So I'm gonna bring you guys along with me.
All right, so we just finished the technique portion. Mr. Jack over here crushed it, told me all the secrets. So now I'm gonna try to do it to him. We'll see how it goes. We get the guys going. Realistically, you show some moves, you try it a couple times, try it on a couple different partners, and then uh, as a person watching it, you just try to pick out the things that make the most sense to you, and then try to put it into your game. But um, technique portion is over. We are gonna do some training. All right, we are all done getting in the truck here. So excellent, excellent session. Um, Coach Jack showed some really cool, and I believe I got some footage of it, but some really cool um, half guard entry. And um, we went over Kimura, we had a bunch of sweeps, how to make it to reverse turtle or uh, back turtle. Just awesome. You know, I just kind of talked to him a couple weeks ago and just kind of encouraged him and said like, hey man, like uh, for, like for me personally, I've got a long history of training different martial arts and um, I did some MMA for a long time and um, was at it for a long time. But as I, so I took a little bit of a, some time off, I took like five or six years off and then opened the gym up as kind of like a sidecar to my fitness gym. And um, as I've come back, I've really developed a love for training in the gi. But we had got to a place in the gym where I knew that we needed to add something. We need to add more sessions. We need to add in a no-gi program. But it's just not something that, um, I like training uh, without the gi on, but it's not my favorite. It's not a, a, a main passion of mine. I love being a gi. I love uh, kind of the art of that. So um, Coach Jack just kind of had showed some some prowess and, and really love the nogi stuff. So I approached him and I said, hey Jack, I would love for you to take on the nogi program and you know come on the team and be one of the coaches here. And he jumped on it and he absolutely crushed uh, the session today with the things that he showed. Very good stuff, stuff that I'd never seen before. So that's always good for me. Just been training for so long, sometimes just kind of seeing things repetitively. Um, but every once in a while you get a whole new just group of things that really, really help out your game. So um, we're all finishing up here. I'm gonna run home. Uh, my oldest son Noah has some speed work or speed and agility work here at the gym. One of his football coaches, uh, we kind of rent out the facility on Saturdays and Sundays to him so he can come in here and he can do speed and um, agility work with the team. So I'm gonna go pick him up, bring him back here, maybe get some work done while I'm here. And then, um, you know, it's a Saturday. So we'll see where the day takes us from there. All right, you guys, so um, like I said, we finished up jujitsu and went home, got the kids, came back. Now my oldest son and my middle son are doing some speed and agility work with one of their coaches. So while they're doing that, what often happens is that Megan and I get to sneak in a workout and get to bring in our little guy with us to hang out. Um, so we were on travel for 10 days. Um, so any sort of program right now is not really in the cards. We are doing a program um, with my oldest son right now, but it's more like, you know, athletic performance based stuff. So. We're gonna start that back up on Monday. So while we're waiting, we didn't do anything for 10 days. So we're trying to ease back into training. So um, got a little bit of just kind of easy dumbbell, some cable work um, and keeping it full body as we go. So we're gonna start off, we've got sets of 12. 
on a dumbbell front squat and then a seated cable row. We don't have a normal kind of cable machine here, so we usually have to kind of make do with the things that we can make around the gym here. So um, again, four sets of 12 each for both the dumbbell front squat and the seated cable row. All right, so things to think about with the dumbbell front squat. Um, a lot of times people are very guilty of just kind of mindlessly going through the movement. This is something I've been guilty of in the past as well, but with the front squat, we want to think about we're trying to develop our leg strength. So we're working on our quads, our hamstrings, our glutes, and our core at the same time. So as I'm picking this thing up and I'm going through it, I'm thinking about locking all those things down, and then as I squat and as I stand, I want to push with those muscle groups that I'm trying to develop. So just a little tip about to think about when you're doing a dumbbell front squat. All right, now for the seated cable row. Um, the reason why I like to use this is because it really helps to develop those kind of weak, lagging muscle groups down kind of the upper back and the center of your back. So what I like to think about when I'm doing this is that I'm not just trying to pull with my lats, but I'm trying to squeeze all of those upper back muscles and I'm pushing my chest at the same time towards that handle. And with that narrow grip, that makes that pretty easy to feel as you go. So nice long stretch, and then as I pull back, I squeeze and push, trying to drive my elbows together in the back and then pushing my chest towards that handle. Let's go hold in. Say go mom. Go, mom. Say come on mom. Go, mom. Don't let me down mom. Let's go mom. All right, so we just finished up our first superset. Again, we had seated cable rows and then the dumbbell front squats for that. Again, sets of 12. So moving on through this workout, we're sticking with the theme of using supersets. We're gonna go with a seated dumbbell press for a set of 10 reps. And then we're gonna superset that with a set of 10 on each leg of the barbell reverse lunge. Again, as far as weight is concerned, work on something that's heavy. If you think about like a scale of one to 10 being difficulty, right? You wanna be about a seven or eight for each one of these sets. Um, I'm starting off with 60 and then a little bit light on the lunges just because I did run um, six miles this morning and I wanna be a little cautious of not kind of overdoing it with my knees, if you will. So again, three sets, we've got 10 seated dumbbell presses and then 10 barbell reverse lunges. All right, now, for these seated dumbbell presses, hand position is gonna vary, right? Some people will tell you keep the elbows out, flare to the outside because it develops your delts more. Some will tell you keep it in a neutral grip because it's a more functional, natural movement. I usually kind of split the difference. So I think about elbow at about a 45 degree angle. I wanna come up, get a good extension at the top so that I can get a squeeze on my tricep, and then nice, slow, controlled repetition, touching the dumbbell head on my shoulder. Very similar to the dumbbell front squat. Remember, this is an upper body exercise you're trying to develop your shoulders when you do it. So as you drive up, think about firing with those muscles and then using those shoulders almost like a, like a brake pedal as you control the load back down. Now for these barbell reverse lunges. I think about stepping back, and now position at the bottom is kind of important, right? So as I step back, I want to align my knee up under my hip, and then my knee over my front heel. And then as I'm driving forward, it's almost if I have, as if I have a slight incline in my torso, and I'm trying to drive with my lead leg, and my trailing leg is just there more or less for balance. And I think about if my hips were moving kind of in a 45 degree angle, like upward trajectory every single time. Again, remember that my front leg is doing the work. So I've got the barbell rack, I step back, knee under hip, knee over heel, slight lean. I drive my hips up at an angle to come to that top position. And then I like to just give a little touch of the leg, not so much 
um, as far as like taking weight or load off, but just more for balance. All right, so we're finishing up our workout. Um, I like to start all my workouts off with um, the, the, the movements that I'm going to lift the heaviest weights with, right? In the past, I've called them metric-based lifts. Some people, you know, just put compound lifts there. For me, it's like, what lifts am I going to lift the heaviest, and do I need to be the most fresh for in my nervous system? I'll start with that. Next, we moved into some lifts that a little less neurologically fatiguing, but still allowing you to lift a little bit of weight. And now as we finish, this is all accessory movements, all isolation-based movements. We've got a leaning lateral raise where I'm gonna be hanging off the bar and leaning to the side for raises. Those are great because it just kind of takes your traps out of the equation and makes sure that you're just working with your deltoids. Then we're gonna move into some banded tricep press downs. And then we're gonna finish with a little bit of core and the banded reverse crunch. So three sets. Two to three sets, realistically, um, depending on how you feel. Again, we're a little bit tired. We just got off vacation. We ran a lot of miles this morning. So running a little bit low on fuel. Um, so we're probably going to do two sets of this, but you can do as much as three, 15 reps for each day, and then your workout will be complete. So most people don't know this, but uh, Megan was actually one of my original training partners. Um, back years ago when I started the gym, we were actually up in the second story of the martial arts facility that I trained at. Um, I trained at a gym called Bushido Mixed Martial Arts. They're still in Portsmouth, Virginia to this day. Um, Alan and Greg, amazing dudes, um, taught me a lot of what I know about both martial arts, being a good person, and then running a business. And um, back when we started there, I had this crazy idea, hey, I wanna start a gym and I want to train our fight team. At the time, I was doing mixed martial arts. If you, if you have some time on your hands and you want to go look up <clears throat> some old time stuff, you can just type in Cody Smith mixed martial arts. And there's a couple of my old fights on YouTube. Um, but back then, I was kind of like the head of the fight team. And I had this idea that um, I was doing CrossFit. I wanted to teach the other gym or the other members of the gym and the fight team how to do it as well. So I had this crazy idea. You know, we took over the second story of Bushido mixed martial arts and uh, I put a gym up there. We couldn't drop weights, we couldn't do anything because we would literally burst through the floor and come into the changing rooms under us. So um, we're doing things like snatches and clean and jerks and we actually couldn't drop the barbells at all. Um, and then way back then when I started the gym, this young lady was my training partner and I was either working out with her or another good friend of mine named Van and because uh, when you're coaching all the time and then working on the, all the other times, uh, training partners are not easy to come by. And um, these two were around me the most, so they were somebody that I hung out with. So um, on the weekends, when we can get in here, we can work out together, this is what we do. Um, especially right now where her kind of schedule at work has changed and it's allowed us to have some more time together. So um, we're gonna finish up our workout and then probably head home. Um, we're talking about possibly getting some pizza and uh, <clears throat> buying the new Top Gun movie. And um, spending some time together, just me and the old lady. Honey, how was working out with me today? Great. <laughs> she doesn't like me to coach her. I'm even tired, though, I need even, a nap. Yeah, I made her run with me and work out today. And um, she doesn't let me coach her, even though I've been doing it for 10 years. But here we are working out together. <laughs> we'll see you guys at home. All right, so the day is coming to a close. We just finished dinner. <laughs> what do you want to say? You say hi? Hi. <laughs> so day's coming to a close. We just finished dinner and uh, the boys are outside playing basketball. And um, I'm just gonna come out here to the deck and probably sit in one of those chairs and just relax. Holding and always singing. And that's gonna be it for the vlog. So again, early morning running, did a little jujitsu, got into um, some lifting after that and uh, now we're gonna finish up that's pretty much a typical weekend with the Smiths and um, kind of used to or just glad to be back on schedule and um, getting back to the gym and uh, getting back to some normalcy sometimes vacation is really cool but I'd be lying if I said that I didn't miss my schedule and uh, you know being in my house so um, that's it for this vlog hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one